Hello everybody and welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Neil Cook from Onshape and today I am joined by Yasin from Dragon Innovation. Uh, Hello everybody. This webinar is entitled Beyond Prototyping, pr prototyping Cutting Edge Tools to Accelerate Design and Manufacturing for Hardware Startups. Now we're going to be doing a, a joint presentation here. Um, I'm going to present how Onshape can uh, help hardware startups and then yes we'll be talking about dragon innovation and what their product offerings are and how the two work together now we'll let's like try to keep this as interactive as possible so if you have any um, questions then please type them into the go to webinar questions panel and we will look to answer them uh, at the end of the presentation we won't stop halfway through but please type those questions in and we'll have 10 15 minutes at the end for uh, answering questions okay so let's um let's jump straight in okay so if you're a designer and you work at a, an established engineering company then then chances are that you that you work in an office that you've got other designers around you you've got other members of the business to support you to make sure that all your design and projects come to fruition. Uh, it's likely that also you've got some manufacturing resources either in-house or an established uh, supply chain that you can call upon. And finally, really, that you've also got the financial resources to back you to make sure that everything you do uh, is successful from a design, manufacturing, marketing, sales, and distribution standpoint. However, if you've got uh, you know, a great idea for a new a new product, a new, uh, a new bit of hardware design, and you want to go it on your own, uh, build, your, create your own startup, then the chances are that you won't have access to any of these facilities. What you do have access to, though, is a network of talented and driven individuals who are there to help you get your idea to the market. Now, because of the way things are organized, you know, you might have a, a makerspace to work in, but in general, you know, hardware startups are, are not located in the same in the same place. They might be working from home. They might be just working abroad. They might be working, even if it's a, a supplier, it's somebody who's not uh, with you uh, all the time. And obviously, you're going to meet up and, and work out design issues and so on. But actually getting a product to market, uh, there are some challenges that you'd face in order to get everybody working together seamlessly. So if we've got, say, these four people here, and it doesn't matter whether they are in the same office or whether they are uh, geographically dispersed, then currently the way you have to design product is that each person needs his or her own uh, workstation or workstation class laptop. And each one of those people need to install a CAD system in order to do the design. Now, obviously, there's a different types of design. You know, there's industrial design and so on. But for the core mechanical design of the hardware, each person needs a CAD system. Now, in order to run that CAD system, each of those people needs an expensive workstation. You know, uh, most most run on uh, on Windows. Uh, so you need obviously a, a beefy Windows machine with a with a good graphics card. Uh, a lot of CPU and a lot of RAM in order to run a CAD system. They're very uh, processor and graphics intensive. So, you know, it's understandable why you need those uh, types of level of hardware. Then each of those people need to uh, install software. If you're not co-located, then they have to download it. You know, it might be 10 gigabytes plus is usual uh, size of a CAD system these days. Um, you have to install it, you have to upgrade it, you have to add service packs, you have to sort out license codes, talk to resellers, uh, set up servers maybe. And one of the fundamental things here is that in order for these four people, and you can imagine there might be more than four people, it might be you know a complete supply chain of people all working together, that really in order to have a seamless integration or have everybody working uh, on the same product, is that everybody needs to be on the same software and on the same software version. So if uh, a new service pack comes out to fix a, fix a bug, then each one of that, those people needs to install that service pack or install the latest version of the CAD software in order for, those, for the entire team to work together uh, seamlessly. And typical of the CAD industry 
is that um, customer support has been, you know, fair to middling, uh, it's quite mediocre with regards to response times and you know, if there's a bug requires fixing, you've got to wait to the service pack or the next release, or it might never get fixed at all. You know, CAD is just one of those things that people have had to put up with over the years in order to get their job done. Now, what actually makes it worse then, you know, you've got all the, the CAD capabilities or the CAD issues related to a traditional CAD system. But one of the main culprits here is the data that those CAD systems create. Now, each part assembly drawing or whatever else that you're actually designing within the CAD system is going to generate a file. That's a unique file for every object that makes up your design. Uh, so even if you're importing some PCB data from somewhere else, it's going to generate CAD files. Now, one of those files, uh, each of those files are unique. So in order for each person to be able to work on those, they need to be able to get access to them. Okay, now how do you get access to CAD files at the moment? There are numerous ways. First of all, you could uh, send a CAD file by email, which is probably the most insecure method of transferring data ever invented. So very easily hacked and, and diverted. Uh, you could set up an FTP site. You could put data on a USB stick and, and, and throw it in the mail. All these ways of transferring data between people who are not located in the same location uh, very susceptible to uh, data loss, both from a, a theft and from a corruption standpoint, uh, and also very susceptible to people working on the wrong version of a CAD file. So you've got the file sharing data security, you've got the latest version. If somebody's writing to a file, are they overwriting your work or are you overwriting theirs? Now, there are ways around this. You can uh, implement things like um, file servers, on a, on a Windows server, or you can buy and install expensive servers and expensive PDM software and, and ship that to everyone. But but really, we're now getting out the realms of the um, the resources available to a hardware startup. What you really need is something which be able to manage this data easily. Now, you could actually put that data in the cloud. You could have there are there are a number of cloud PDM solutions. You could just do file sharing using something like Dropbox, but then really all you're doing is shifting the problem from the manual method of trans transferring data from that like email and USB sticks to in the cloud. The issue here really is that there are literally files and file copies everywhere. Whenever you send a CAD file to one of your colleagues, they have a local copy on their computer. They're making changes, you know, and this issue with who's overwriting, who's changes, who's got the latest version. This slide looks chaotic uh, because I'm sure if you've experienced this, you'll know how, cha how chaotic it can be. Even if you're not a seasoned CAD user, you must have come across the case where you're trying to make comments on a Microsoft Word document and it gets emailed backwards and forwards and then people change this file name. So it says, uh, final and final final and final 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 because people are adding comments and emailing files backwards and forwards so they're just simply just copies everywhere and chaos ensues okay so how do you combat this well the the way to get rid of this this issue these issues with working in teams and getting the data together and getting your projects out on time is to get rid of files completely and the way to do that in a modern CAD configuration is to store all the data in a database. So that means there are no files. There is no need to actually send files between computers because each computer would then access this central database and get the data that they need. Now, the benefit as well is with modern CAD is that it's also in the cloud. So there is um, so there's no requirements to administer that database, it's all taken care of for you. There is also a bunch of other uh, benefits as well. So for example, uh, when you running uh, Onshape through a, a browser, because it's entirely cloud-based, so both the CAD data and the CAD software is in the cloud, it means that you can run it on any device. So you can run it on a, um, on a Windows machine, a Mac, um, a Chromebook, a Linux machine, you can run it on a tablet, you can run it on a phone, 
Uh, and those are not just viewers, by the way, those are the actual entire CAD system on a tablet or a phone. So, so really from a startup perspective, you don't have to have that initial outlay of buying things like uh, you know, expensive hardware and servers um, just to actually run the software. You could just pick up the nearest Linux machine uh, that might, you know, obviously Linux is is a free operating system and start work with, uh, on a very complex uh, CAD project uh, within within moments. With regards to instant deployment, now what we mean by this is in the process we talked about in the previous slide, obtaining software, obtaining hardware, speaking, you know, getting license codes, installing with Onshape, because like as with any cloud service, if you've ever used any cloud service, is that all you're actually having to do is to add somebody's email address and suddenly they are, be, are part of your ecosystem. So it's literally instant deployment. It takes like seconds to add somebody to your project and give them access to enterprise grade 3D CAD. So there is literally no uh, installing or downloading or any of that nonsense so that gives you a zero it overhead because you you're not having to shell out for hardware you're not having to shell out for servers or or there's um you know there's no upfront uh, licensing costs so there's a lot of things that you can save both from a hardware and a uh, configuration standpoint so it means that you can get up and running uh, real quick what we'll look at shortly, and when we talk in that previous slide, we looked at the four uh, laptops there accessing the database at the same time. This is another benefit that you're getting without not having files within uh, uh, within your setup, is that anybody can work uh, on the same data at the same time, something which is heard unheard of in the old CAD and PDM world, where once somebody has a, a checks out some files from a PDM system, they become locked which means that nobody else can work on them. So that forces a very serial workflow. So you can't do anything until another person has, has checked those files back in. What working with the database enables you to do is to work together in real time in a very parallel workflow. Because there are no files, there is never any lost or corrupt data. And in fact, I'll be so bold as to say that Onshape never crashes. And I'm sure if anybody's used the 3 dcast system, you get hear horror stories of uh, you know one crash a week to a dozen a day and obviously whenever there's a crash you're going to lose data on shape never crashes and your data is always safe and secure so the you always make sure that you're always working on the latest version and there is no confusion between the entire team and indeed your extended design team with your suppliers and maybe even customers and if you look on uh, a software review forum like G2 Crowd or Captera, you will see that one of the outstanding things people say about Onshape is the, the level of training and support that we deliver. Uh, there is a bunch of self self-paced training videos that you can go through, including exercises that is all free uh, and support. We can get we can get support to you within uh, uh, anywhere between minutes and a couple of hours. Uh, one of the beauty things about Onshape as well is the community is very vibrant. So if you have a technical question, you can hop onto the Onshape forum and there'll be a bunch of experts, both employees and uh, pro users, uh, for, uh, customers, who are really happy to help out in, in any shape or form. Okay, what I want to do is just take a, a brief look at uh, Onshape just to show a few of the salient points that we've talked about so far. So really what I've, what I've talked about so far is not really um, about CAD capability, but really how it helps um, our startups or small businesses or even large businesses for that matter to be able to work collaboratively and work at the same time with very little effort and setup. Okay, so let me just uh, let me just sign out of here and just and just show real quick how how this will work. So literally, when somebody gets an invite to uh, to Onshape, they will asked to create a password and you just go ahead and sign in. Now, the data management aspect of Onshape is all built in. So what we're looking at here now is a list of projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, and each one of these items is a project. So it's, because there is no files, it's not like a single file or a single assembly or a part, it is one project. So it means that um, you know I can see which, see which teams are working on, perhaps there is some, uh, you know, there's some work in progress um, documents that I'm working on there and everything 
is very easy to navigate to find the data that you need. Now, again, if you imagine here, all I've done here is just signed into a browser and I've gone through a data management system and now I'm into the CAD system. So we've got full blown enterprise grade 3D CAD directly in your browser. Now, this, uh, you know, this is a, a simple project. It's a tachometer calibrator. Um, and it's something that you could imagine and perhaps a, a hardware startup has gone through an intensive um, prototype stage. They've come up with the design. They want to try and productionize this, um, this, this product. But also if you want to, let's just jump into a few design aspects first. Uh, if um, talking about how do we share data, then very much like Google Docs, we're just gonna hit the share button in the top right and then add somebody in. We can see that Yasin's already uh, uh, a part of this document here. But if I was to ask, add uh, uh, myself in, for example, uh, then all you need to do is just specify what some what permissions somebody has. So, for example, if you're if you're looking at a um, uh, adding a supplier, then you might want to put their name in and give them comment capabilities. So, once you hit share. That person there will receive an email, they click on it, it opens a browser, and they can view and comment on it. So ideal for somebody for doing an RFQ, giving you a quote for, for some work to be done. Um, and then once you're happy with that, you can give them extra permissions. So for example, then you might say, okay, well, these person are either going to 3D print or they're going to machine this. So let's give them export capabilities and then just go ahead and update that. And immediately then they get permissions to do that. Likewise, if it's actually a contractor or a coworker, then really you want to be able to give them edit permissions. Um, you don't necessarily want them to give them permission to share it again. Uh, let's give them com uh, comments and update that. And then the cool thing about this is that if you wanted to then remove somebody, all you need to do is just go ahead and click the link, the X, sorry, next to their name, and their access is revoked immediately. So again, if you're working with suppliers or, or anybody and you just want to give them temporary access to data, you can do so through this, uh, through this interface and also revoke that permissions just as easily. Okay, so, so what happens here then is if I, um, Let's see if I can get this screen mirroring to work, and I'm just going to sign in on my uh, on my phone. So, if you've got multiple people working on the on the same data, well, let's just go ahead and just open this document. As soon as I open it, you'll see. Uh, I mean, it's it's myself operating on the same data here, but you'll see that my face uh, has appeared here. So I know immediately that somebody's in the document. Again, very much like uh, very much like Google Docs. And if you were to double click on that on that person's face, then then you'd be able to get see exactly what what they're doing. So as I'm rotating it around on the phone, you can see it's updating on the uh, on the window. So it's great for design reviews. You know, if I was to come over here and uh, open one of these other uh, tabs, you'll see it then follows suit in on the on the website and vice versa. You can you can do it both ways. So so great for doing any kind of design review. So if you pick a face, it's going to highlight on there. You know really good stuff but what we're also doing here is uh, we're working on the same CAD data at the same time okay so let's just do something do something real quick here and I'm going to go back to uh, this top level assembly and one of the things I want to edit or have both people look at is this cutout for this uh, USB uh, port here so let me just go ahead and um, just hide a few bits and pieces and just go ahead and edit um, this document in context. So this is a, a cool way to be able to work on a more complex designs. So you can see here that we're working on the, the parts in isolation, but we can see some of the assembly components ghosted in the image. So it's very easy to, uh, to see where things are changing. So let's go ahead and uh, edit a sketch. And let's just look from the uh, from the top view okay so that so we can see there uh, documents going on now if you look over at the phone we'll see if i scroll down this list of features okay we can see there that uh, that neil is editing sketch four so we can see that something's going on here okay but i'm not going to bother with that right now let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's say add some fillets on the phone so you can see here this is the full cad system so you're getting the um 
you're getting the freedom that this that this gives you so you're not tied down to uh, an actual workstation you can do this on the go so um sorry i don't want to, I don't mean to pick that face you can see this precision selector and let's just go ahead and add a few edges in there now what you'll see from from the website is saying, saying that the other neil is creating a new feature so this is working on the same part and if i go ahead and accept the fillet on the phone okay you'll see that the fillets actually already appeared even though i'm editing a sketch the fillets already appeared so this is where we're getting true real-time interaction between uh, between two or more people editing and in fact you can actually even edit the same sketch which you, you know which is totally unheard of so if i was to uh, go in here and let's make uh, uh, let's make a change between uh, Let's pick one of these edges and this and make it uh sorry i need an edge yeah that'll do uh, let's just make these midpoint what the, what that's doing there is then making a, a reference to to the main design and likewise on on the um, on the phone let's go ahead and make a design change uh to the size and and again i think you get the idea here is that there's the full uh, capability and collaboration between multiple people working on that same design so if i go ahead and, and accept that you can see there uh, that those design changes from both people have been integrated into the main design okay uh, just real quick then let's just uh, just finish this off and i'm going to close the um, close the phone now one of the advantages of being able to do easy sharing and collaboration like this is the fact that you can introduce uh, suppliers and so on uh, into the design so that if you want to take a look at this design for manufacturability you could do things like uh, you know you share this in let them look at it do measurements is it um, you know are some of these bosses uh, done correct you might want to do something like a, a draft analysis uh, and then do simple changes on it so the here any faces that are yellow don't have drafts so if this thing's going to be injection molded you need to make sure it is manufacturable so let's just go ahead and add some um, uh, some draft on here just real quick and just pick some of these faces so we'll pick some of these yellow faces i'm getting a bit ahead of myself here okay and there we go so those those turn blue so as we're as we're adding draft on here you can see these edges coming out so this enables especially if you've given your supplier uh, permission to edit the document they could do these changes for you so you're not having to uh, focus too much on manufacturability if you want to hand that capability off to somebody else uh, to work with so that's give you um, just a, a real quick overview of taking data that's in the cloud and being easy, easily able to share it with others uh, with minimal setup. So I didn't actually have to do anything to set that up. I didn't have to install anything, any, you know, didn't have to send any emails, literally just open a browser, sign in, open your document, share it. It's as simple as that. Okay, so uh, with that, um, I then want to take, uh, pass this over to, um, over to the over to guys in uh, to Dragon. Um, because we're going to take this information from this design and use the information from the bill of materials of this design to, to to plan the product to go forward through to manufacturing so with that i will pass you over to yasin all right All right, seamless transition. One of my favorite things in the world. Um, and as you know, as you probably feel by now, seamless transition is an, is an overall theme for today. So to start, let's talk about, um, before we get into kind of the ins and outs of Product Planner, let's talk about where Planner fits in the larger scheme of things. Um, and so, you know, you've we've already been talking about um, Stuff on the cloud, minimal deployment, um, quick collaboration, and the same benefits that Onshape brings um, in the CAD world are what 
planner, product planner intends to bring um, to the PLM world. So typically when we talk about managing BOM and managing kind of your, your project at large, we know for a fact that everybody tends to start with spreadsheets. Um, and we also know that at the other end of things, you know, once you get large enough and once your, you know, your data becomes complicated enough, there is a plethora of tools available for you um, from a PLM, PDM, insert three letter acronym here perspective. Um, whether it's, you know, SAP Arena, Oracle, NetSuite, Winchill, and so on and so forth. Um, and what we have heard and what we have seen is that typically these systems are, you know, if you've heard this before, stop me, they're expensive to deploy, um, ton of controls you don't need, not quite the right size, especially if we're talking about um, hardware startups and the level of agility um, and collaboration required there. And so where we intend to sit is between the spreadsheet and that um, beefy PLM slash PDM deployment. Um, we want to offer that lightweight approach. But not only that, there's a bit more to it than that. So what we really think about here at Dragon is the manufacturing angle, the things that matter, cost, quality, and schedule. Ultimately, all the work you know, that you and your team are doing is, is um, geared towards delivering under budget, delivering on time, and delivering with as few returns as possible. And while PDM and PLM systems give you some view of that, it's not really what they were meant to do. Um, they're more data management. But our approach to it is, as a startup, really, schedule, cost, and quality are what you live and die by, especially if it's your first new product introduction. You really need to understand the trade-offs that you're making within these three parameters at all times. Um, and that's really what we built Planner to do. So I could tell you more about it, but I would much rather show you. So let's do that. So what you see now is a um, is the planner dashboard. You know this is this is typical after logging in. This is what you see, and you can see already at the top right we're talking about inviting collaborators. You can invite a teammate as simply as entering an email, clicking invite, and um, an email will be sent to them. And through that link, they will be added to your project um, and have access to to this dashboard as well. So let's dive into this rather familiar looking tachometer calibrator. Um, and you'll notice it's in something called a SKU. And here's where things get really interesting because statistically speaking, um, we know that you know, early hardware teams, startups are spending their time, are spending blood, sweat, and tears digging into what we like to call their product item. This tachometer calibrator, for example, this is the thing, this is the device that you are building. And typically, that is where the majority of your effort rightfully goes. But that's not all there is to it. Um, so typically, when you, as we like to say, when you order a burger, they do not slide a greasy burger at you over the counter. Um, typically, there are some things that come with it, like, um, you know, wrapper, so packaging, maybe some fries, like accessories. And so that value meal is really the skew. That is what you are looking to buy. Similarly, when a customer comes to you, they're not looking to just buy a device. They're also expecting some packaging, like say a, a box, maybe an insert, maybe a bag, maybe a manual as well. And similarly, if your device, you know, comes with any sort of charging cable, doesn't matter if it's the best device in the world, if you can't charge it, it's pretty useless. And so there are also these accessories that you need to think about. And so we're kind of shifting the mindset slightly from just thinking about the device itself to thinking about your project and your product as a whole, your offering as a whole. And if we dig into the bomb here, you will notice a rather familiar looking, if you were paying attention uh, earlier, a rather familiar looking structure. Essentially, this is the structure that was um, that we saw in the CAD, um, it's been filled out, but all of this was housed in CAD. You'll even notice that the part numbers are the same for easy reference purposes. And Planner supports different part types. So you can have assemblies with electronic parts and electronic parts have their own set of fields, similarly with fabricated parts. You can have the bounding dimensions in there, a manufacturing process like say injection molding, um, you know, and a material type. So this is all well and good, but this is all just kind of housing data. 
Um, where things get maybe a bit more interesting is the flat view, which I'm clicking into now. And what the flat view has done is that it's taken the bill of materials, it's flattened it out, and it has listed the parts by type. One of my favorite things the planner does is if we scroll all the way down here, you'll note that our total price is 46.45 for the SKU that, you know, that we want to sell, at least from a unit cost perspective. And the order quantity here is 10,000, so I'm going to bill 10,000 of these. But let's say I was doing a pilot run of 500. What would that look like? Well, if I scroll all the way down, you'll notice that the total price is now 49.2. It's changed. And the reason that is, let me find a good part here. Here we go. And the reason that is, is because cost volume pairs, the idea that you need an MOQ to hit a particular um, price point, is native to Planner. You'll also note here that these are system estimated costs. And so one of the nice things that Planner does for your double E is if you have the MPNs of your parts ready with a single button click, um, you can generate a blended estimate of what this part should cost at different MOQs. So now that we have an understanding kind of, of unit cost and how things change across different MOQs, is that it? Well, not really. There's more to it than unit costs as well. So there are also fixed costs. So sometimes you have non-recurring engineering costs, like say you're going to get somebody to help you with design consulting or design for manufacturability. Um, you can add an estimate um, here or you can add your own. Or let's say you want to have some understanding of your tooling costs. This one's actually pretty interesting, so we're gonna click into that. And you'll see here that, oh, well, I've got two fabricated parts I can see here, case upper and case lower. They're injection molded and we know their dimensions. And based on that um, and kind of Dragon's historical knowledge and the prices we've observed, we can actually get you an estimate on that tooling. Now, granted, this is a budgetary estimate, um, but you know, typically the estimate that we have seen in projects has been zero and it most and zero is most definitely the number it is not. Um, and so that gives us kind of a holistic view of unit costs and fixed costs, right? So how does this all come together? Well, one way it comes together is in the break-even report. So if I want to sell my tachometer calibrator SKU, I can input a retail price, take into account, let me just disable all of these. So you'll notice here that there is already a fixed cost offset. So this is, these are my fixed costs to start. I can factor in my total cogs. This is kind of linearly driven by my unit cost. Overlay that with revenue. And I can say with some level of certainty that I need to sell, let's call it at least 1,037 units to break even on this. But the other thing that this very quickly lets me do is say, well, okay, what if a competitor is putting price pressure on me? Can I sell this for 60? And the answer is yes, I can. The break-even quantity has gone up, but the reason we built the break-even report is so that you can experiment with different retail prices and really quickly understand at, one point, at what point it becomes untenable um, for you to, to build what you intend to build, because sometimes the break-even point is higher than build quantity, and sometimes if your retail price is ridiculously low, let's see if we can go there, there we go, there is no break-even price. Um, and this comes, again, because what, what kind of causes this to flip is not just going near unit costs, it's, it's neglecting that fixed cost contribution. And so the reason we provide those budgetary estimates really early on is to allow you to model that early and develop an understanding of that pretty early. The other report that we absolutely love and is our pride and joy here at Dragon is the cash flow report. So we've talked about order quantities, we've talked about fixed costs, we've talked about unit costs, but what we haven't really talked about is timing, and this is what kills hardware startups. It's, this is what is affectionately known as the valley of death. Um, it's because your tooling costs are early expenditures, and you have to spend those way before you see any revenue. And not having an adequate understanding of those is the difference between raising enough money or not raising enough money. 
And while I cannot see you, I will say, raise your hand if you've ever funded a Kickstarter hardware project um, that never delivered. And I can't see you, but I know at least a solid 70% of you are raising their hands. Yes, exactly. Um, this is why. It's because there is an inadequate understanding of the amount of capital required to start a project. The other thing that the cash flow report does is that it helps you experiment with the terms of it. So let's say, for example, I just, you know, right now, under these, um, under, under these circumstances, I'm selling direct. I have no starting cash. Um, I have to pay 70% of my components up front. Um, and my post payment due date is 30 and my customer payment terms are net zero. My customers pay when they buy. But let's say we were to change things ever so slightly. So let's say I want to go sell through retail. Who are going to take a hefty chunk of the sticker price that I sell for. Let us also say that because I'm selling retail, they're going to make me wait 30 days before they give me any money. What does that look like for my project? And as you can see, it's added a solid 30K to the, to the amount of money I need to raise. Um, understanding that is very important. Understanding that essentially the mix, your starting cash balance, the channels you sell through all impact the, the cash that you need to raise is key. And so to, to bring it all back, the general idea here is on having that, that view of the manufacturing triangle, which is really encompassed by and large by the cash flow report in terms of cost and schedule. Um, quality is harder to quantify, but that's what the collaboration features are for. And as you continue to iterate on your CAD, as you continue to iterate on your double E design, as you continue to make um, business model decisions, um, what Planner intends to do is to give you the space to enter all of those variables and holistically give you a view of what's going on. We have heard, and um, the phrase people have used is, the amount of decisions we needed to make at that phase was overwhelming. And so that is what we seek to avoid with Planner. We seek to give you the ability to iterate as fast as possible as you iterate across your CAD, as you iterate across your double E, reflect those changes in your bill of materials here. And from there, you'll be able to see exactly where things stand and what trade-offs you can and cannot make. And so planner for hardware startups, why is it the right approach? Well, we strongly believe that you should have clarity on your outcomes in terms of cost, quality, and schedule at all times. It's a lightweight approach. You know, hopefully you, you observed that the UX was lighter and airier than what you typically see in a PLM or PDM deployment. Um, we only build the things that we feel are absolutely needed. Um, and so, for example, what we are, we're fighting against building engineering change control because while we understand the value of checking in and checking out stuff, what we want to aspire to is that same philosophy that Onshape um, aspires to, which is real-time collaboration at all, all times. And so you have all the benefits of a cloud deployment as well, as well, which, you know, Neil spoke at length about, so I won't get into those. Easy collaboration across your team. It's as simple as typing in an email and sending an invite. And the other thing to note about Planner is that it's priced for startups. We are strong believers in team pricing, so none of that per seat stuff. Um, you can check out the pricing on the website. Um, but suffice to say, you know, from, from where we intend to place ourselves in the market, hopefully you'll find it price competitive and a fit for your needs. And with that, I'll give it back to Neil. Okay, thanks, Yasin. So, so really, I'm just, got, just summarising really what was going on before with all the uh, with all the capabilities that we that we have. Um, let me just put it back to me. Okay, and um, so we've covered all the all the benefits of of Onshape with all the zero IT overhead, instant deployment, and minimal hardware requirements as well as the CAD capabilities of real-time collaboration, no crashes, and uh, the, the world-class training and support. Um, before we move into questions, so if you've got any questions, please type them into the GoToWebinar question panel. Uh, if you want to get a customized overview of Onshape with one of our engineering experts, then you can either call Onshape directly or send us an email, or actually if you go to onshape.com forward slash demo, then you can sign up for a demo there. And that will give you the opportunity 
to uh, sit with somebody one on one, well, over the web, and, uh, and go through your issues, or go through your questions, and see if Onshape is the right fit for you. Um, and Yasin, do you want to say something about this? Yes, please. Similarly, you can start a free trial of, um, of Planner at dragoninnovation.com slash planner. And if you're already in there or you would like some help getting started, just email, email us at help at dragoninnovation.com to set up a personalized demo and we'll take it from there. Great. OK, so so with that, let's uh, let's move on to questions. Like I say, uh, we've got a number of questions come in. Um, we will spend uh, approximately uh, 10, 15 minutes answering questions. Uh, but what we'd like to do is to uh, keep, open it up. Please ask those questions and we will get to them uh, as many as we can. So a um, question for you, Yasin, first of all, is a uh, question. Do you have to have manufacturing experience to use these products? Um, I mean, for, for Product Planner, the, um, the assumption is that you do not have manufacturing experience. One of the things that Planner bring, brings to the table um, is, as I previously mentioned, a template. And so we have these spaces that allow you to put in your product item, your device, um, your, your packaging, your accessories. Um, and again, we provide those budgetary estimates to really start you off on the right foot. And you'll find that um, essentially there are a lot of blanks that you need to fill. And so, no, um, you do not need to have manufacturing experience to get started in product planning. Great, okay. Uh, question for me here. Um, how secure is your data? What is stopping anyone from hacking your systems and stealing my intellectual property? Okay, I mean, that's a question we get all the time, and it's typically uh, if somebody is used to keeping CAD files on their own server behind their firewall in the fireproof room in the corner, um, there's some reluctance to have uh, intellectual property out there in on the, you know, in the World Wide Web somewhere. But what I'd like to say is that on shape, hosted by Amazon Web Services, they've got guys on the gate with guns. You know, you, we're not going to get somebody actually going to physically go and get uh, get the data. But of course, hackers come in and try and get through back doors. Now, I wouldn't claim that data is completely unhackable because that's uh, as proven in the news many, many times that is there's no such thing. However, there are extra precautions uh, that make uh, on shape pretty much impenetrable simply because uh, just because of the architecture, because everything is uh, multiple parallel threaded, you know, multiple thre multi-threaded, is that there is different servers to different actors, the different database servers, different uh, modeling server, kernel, different kernel server, different, there's about, I don't know, a dozen or so different servers that make up the Onshape service, plus there's the data itself. So if somebody were to, to uh, successfully take the data, they would have to be able to hack into all those other dozen systems and replicate the software and set it up configured locally on their machine uh, to be able to access the data. And that's, that's you know, the chances of that are, are pretty Im improbable. So whereas from a, um, like a traditional CAD system standpoint, all somebody needs to do is grab your, your file from an email and just get a copy of uh, the software uh, you know, even from a torrent or something, they don't even have to pay for it, and they can access your data. So, for the it's like apples, you know, comparing apples and oranges for, for security between the traditional file-based CAD system uh, and on Shapes cloud system. Okay, question for you, uh, Yasin. So, what? Who would value the reporting of Product Planner? So, as we mentioned, the um, the manufacturing triangle, understanding everything in terms of cost, quality, and schedule, um, is really important. And so, the reporting is of, I would say, um, the highest value to the person who is the product owner within an organization. That person who is in charge of delivering um, on budget and on time. That said, though. Um, I think there's value in the entire team for reporting because the thing that it enables is uh, a more decentralized um, approach to decision making or even a more consultative approach to decision making. Case in point, if you know that a design decision that um, you need to make um, you know, can, can result in a six-week schedule slippage, which will cause you to miss the Christmas retail season, um, you know, having instant clarity into that 
um, and enabling kind of, you know, the frontliners, the engineers, whether it's on the WE side or on the ME side, um, to make the decisions that optimize for the project outcomes as a whole is a much more efficient approach than, um, than having one person um, be the bottleneck to that decision. Or it can be a more consultative approach. But generally, that person who's responsible for the delivery is the one who finds the most benefit in reporting. But I would argue that everybody will find benefit in that reporting as well. Okay, great. Uh, question for Onshape. Uh, can you open my SOLIDWORKS files? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a generic question. Now, obviously, Onshape is uh, fairly late to the game, if you like, for the, in the CAD game. Many of these systems have been around 30 years plus. There's uh, lots of companies using them. So if you do need to collaborate with somebody, uh, a supplier or or, uh, you know, or even a customer, somebody somebody uh, within your, chair, your extended team that doesn't use Onshape, uh, well, we can read and write native SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, CATIA, Solid Edge, um, new, neutral formats, JT, Step. You know, the list is the list is endless. And if you go to uh, uh, the Onshape Help system, is, there's a, a full list there. So, uh, what's probably worth noting is that when transferring data from any system to another system, is that it, there is no feature parity. So it doesn't transfer the feature data over. But that is kind of uh, standard. Uh, across the board but you know there's high fidelity of that data that goes between systems okay uh another question for on shape uh do you have sheet metal material managing work to working tool which uses specific mechanical properties of materials um so now on shape does have sheet metal design capabilities so you can uh, we something that we call simultaneous sheet metal because it enables you to design both in the folded and the flat at the same time so you can pick up any manufacturing errors early on now with regards to materials um, we currently don't have a database of materials with bend allowances and k factors related to the material so you would although you can enter that material that data and get the part to bend accurately uh, that data would still have to be extracted manually from your materials database. Okay, question for uh, Yasin. Uh, what are the communication values of Product Planner? So I would answer that by saying they're very similar to the communication values that Neil outlined when talking about on shape. It's, the, it's that idea that you're going to have everybody have your entire team be looking at a single source of truth at all times. The data is going to be up to date at all times. With the alternative being, especially for bills of materials, um, spreadsheet sharing across file sharing solutions and sending the wrong um, version of the bill of materials to your contract manufacturer um, and all those shenanigans. And so ultimately having everybody be always be looking at the latest bill of materials um, is the core of that communication value, I think. One thing that's worth mentioning as well is that we're, we're soon going to be rolling out a comments feature to enable to enable you to have kind of discussions and threaded discussions around specific parts in Product Planner. And so, again, it's that cloud-enabled um, approach to collaboration and giving everybody the view of the latest data at all times. Okay. Um... Question for Onshape. Uh, if there are no files, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, how do you go back to a previous version or using, <coughs> sorry, it's dying here. How do you go back to a previous version or use an older version of a part in an assembly? Okay, one thing I didn't cover in there is because it's driven from my database and there are no files is that every time you do something in Onshape, the data is saved. Now, every time it, it's, uh, it creates a timestamp, for every edit made by every team member, so it's very easy to see who made which change, who made which changes, and when, and what actually and what they did. You can also very easily back out changes. So if somebody makes a, a design change, you know, deletes a bunch of parts or something, you can always roll it back to where it was before. You can also branch and create multiple branches, um, which, if you're familiar with Git, which is a data management system for uh, software. It, very similar in that you can branch off and multiple people can work in the same document, but in their own sandbox environment, if you like, and then you can get the best design ideas and merge them together to get the best design. 
So you've got the best of both worlds, but really you've got uh, all the data uh, secu uh, stored and you can go backwards and forwards, do comparisons and pick the best bits from, from each design scenario. Okay, another question for Onshape. If my supplier uses another CAD or CAM system, how do we share designs with them? Okay, now I did mention earlier that we can export files in multiple formats, but if you've ever done this kind of file sharing with somebody before, and again, via email or FTP, is that you know you send them a, um, I don't know, well, IGIS, probably the worst format ever. Let's send them an IGIS file, they can't read it. So you send them uh, another file, they can't read it. And it's this kind of backwards and forwards. What you can do with Onshape is, if you share a document with them, you might remember there was an option there to enable them to export, is that they open the, the uh, model in the browser at their end, and then they can choose the format that best suits them. So it's something else you don't need to worry about. You just let, give them export permissions, and they can export it in the format uh, that, they, that they need. Um, and actually, I'll, somebody else has asked a question, it's kind of related. So if you send files to a supplier, how can you stop them from copying them? Um, again, if you have um, if you have the capability, you have the capability to make it just view only. Uh, so, so that means they can't copy it at all. Uh, but if you give them export capabilities, then of course they can export a dumb solid of a part for machining. Um, you know, there's nothing stopping them copying from the export. But then it's really a trust thing. You know, you wouldn't actually give them those permissions unless they were a trusted supplier. So, uh, you know. There's only so much you can do to prevent somebody from doing something bad with your data. Uh, but with Onshape, we try to make it uh, minimize that as much as possible. OK. Um, another question here for Onshape. Um, if somebody needs to learn CAD from scratch, does Onshape offer courses or tutorials uh, for the basics of CAD directly using Onshape, the answer to that is yes. If you go to, um, we well, can either go to onshape.com and go to the learn section or go directly to learn.onshape.com and you can get access to a full range of self-paced video training and exercises. You do need to create an Onshape account first in order to access those, but you can, um, you can sign up for a, a free trial uh, of Onshape and you can also, um, then access that data for free. All the training information is there for free. Okay, uh, there's a lot of duplicate questions there, so I've, so I've kind of uh, I kind of picked the ones that are very uh, similar, uh, but I think we're just about done. Um, yep. Okay. So let's. We'd like to wrap that up then. So first of all, I'd like to really thank. Uh, Yasin from Dragon Innovation from joining us today and showing Product Planner. And I'd also like to thank, of course, all of you for joining the webinar. And thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.